I'm going to walk you through it. Okay. When it comes to our kindergarten student, John. Yes. Um, here we go. What I'm going to do first is ask you to tell me which of these lagging skills are true of John. And we're not splitting hairs. We're not obsessing. If you feel that the lagging skill is generally true of John, we'll check it off. And best of all, this is not a democratic process. If one of you says, yeah, that's true of them, I'm checking it off, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not even looking for a consensus here. If one of you checks, if one of you says it's true of them, check, right? So let's begin with that part of the process. And then what we'll do is move on to unsolved problems. And I'll prompt you to think of unsolved problems. Sound good? Yes. Sounds good. Does John have difficulty maintaining focus? Yes. yes. Check. Does John have difficulty handling transitions, shifting from one mindset or task to another? Yes. Well, we may not need a consensus, but we're getting one. <laughs> Does John have difficulty considering the likely outcomes or consequences of his actions? Yes. Yes. Does John have difficulty persisting on challenging or tedious tasks? I would change persisting to starting. So yes. Um, I'll go with starting. Yes. Mm -hmm. And even sticking with it, both. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Lately? Yeah. Yeah. Does John have difficulty considering a range of solutions to a problem? Yes. Yes. Does John have difficulty expressing concerns, needs, or thoughts in words? Yes. Yes. So far, John is lighting up the tree. <laughs> Does John have difficulty managing his emotional response to frustration so as to think rationally? Yes. yes. Is John chronically irritable and or anxious? And does that significantly impede his capacity for problem solving or heighten his frustration? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Does John have sensory motor difficulties? I don't think so. I don't think so either. No. 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 Oh, sorry. I thought you said no. No. <laughs> no. No, I'm not sure about the motor part, but Lee, I, I would. No, <laughs> he doesn't. I'm going to put a question mark next to it, but I'm not going to check it off. How's that? Does John have difficulty seeing the grays? Is he a concrete, literal black and white thinker? Yes, he has difficulty seeing grays. Very literal. Yeah. Does John have difficulty taking into account situational factors that would suggest the need to adjust a plan of action? Yes. Does, is John, does John have inflexible, inaccurate interpretations, cognitive distortions or biases, for example, but not limited to, everyone's out to get me, no one likes me? Yes. Yes. Hmm. John have difficulty attending to or accurately interpreting social cues? Does he have poor perception of social nuances? Yes. Mm -hmm. John have difficulty shifting from his original idea or plan or solution? Yes. Yes. John have difficulty appreciating how his behavior is affecting other people? Yes. yes. Does John have difficulty starting conversations, entering groups, connecting with people? Is he lacking other basic social skills? Yes. Yeah. That's like two questions, but yes. Yeah. He has some strengths there also, but yes. I see. Okay. John have difficulty empathizing with others, appreciating another person's perspective or point of view. Yes, the majority of the time. Both of those last two are the majority of the time. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, we're not looking for 100% of the time. Yeah. 
Does John have difficulty handling unpredictability, ambiguity, uncertainty, novelty? Yes. No. Yes. So John has lit up the board. Yeah. Yeah. And that tells us that John has a variety of lagging skills that would make it very difficult for him to handle life's problems and frustrations adaptively. And that's what that first section tells us. And it even tells us what those lagging skills are. Now, as I always tell people, that's not an exhaustive list of lagging skills, but it does help us recognize if we didn't already, that John is lacking some very important skills and that those lagging skills are making it difficult for him to handle life's problems and frustrations. And the good thing about that is it helps us get rid of explanations like attention seeking, manipulative, coercive, unmotivated, limit testing, blah, blah, blah. What we can confidently move forward here with is the knowledge that John is lacking skills. Mm -hmm. Unsolved problems are what we're actually going to be working on with John. These are the problems we will want to be solving with John. Now, the best way to think of problems is unmet expectations. These are the expectations John is having difficulty meeting reliably. Just because he can meet it sometimes doesn't mean he can meet it reliably. So even if he can meet an expectation sometimes, if he can't meet it reliably, it's still an unsolved problem. And I use unsolved problem and unmet expectation interchangeably. They are the same thing. The reason we prefer the term unsolved problem is because it makes your role in John's life crystal clear. John is having difficulty solving these problems on, her, on his own, then he's gonna need some help. And that's where you all come in. But first we have to identify those unsolved problems. Now, you're gonna see that I'm trying to word the unsolved problems in a certain way. First of all, even if John is exhibiting challenging behavior in response to a particular unsolved problem, we are not going to include the wording of the challenging behavior in the wording of the unsolved problem. The word difficulty is going to cover whatever behaviors John exhibits, exhibits to communicate to us that he's having difficulty meeting each expectation, right? So what you'll see is that all of the unsolved problems or almost all are gonna start with the word difficulty. After the word difficulty is going to come a verb. Difficulty completing, difficulty getting started on, difficulty sitting, difficulty coming in from, difficulty keeping hands to self when, those are all verbs that come after the word difficulty. <laughs> um, and if Lee, if your dog has any uh, issues with the way we're wording unsolved problems, please ask your dog to I will, it. I will. Uh, John, we're not, if, your, if your dog's name is John, please reassure him that we're not talking about it. <laughs> No, it's Emmy, we're safe. <laughs> um, second thing we're gonna do, is we are not going to include any theories in the wording of the unsolved problem. So we're not gonna say difficulty sitting next to Amanda during circle time because he comes from a broken home and his stepsister is named Amanda. No theories. So anything that comes after the word because, out, including the word because. Good? Yeah. The hard one, this is guideline number three, is that we're gonna be splitting the unsolved problem. So if you all said to me, John is having difficulty writing, I'm gonna say, what's he having difficulty writing? And if you say he's having difficulty, I'm gonna go with some age appropriate things here. He's having difficulty writing the letters of the alphabet He's having difficulty writing his name and 
then I'm going to split those into two different unsolved problems. Difficulty writing his name would be one. Difficulty writing the letters of the alphabet would be another, but difficulty writing would not be an unsolved problem because it's not specific enough. But I'll help you with that. You don't even have to remember that. Mo, you look a little I know. I, don't, I had it until you said the last part. Why? Okay. Why is difficulty not? It's not specific enough. No, why is it not an unsolved problem? Oh, because it's not specific enough. It's too broad. It's too broad. Too broad. And by the way, the reason for this is the wording of the unsolved problem on the ALSIP is going to translate directly into the words that we're going to use when it comes time to introduce the unsolved problem to John, when it comes time to solve the problem together. And if we say to John, I've noticed you have difficulty writing, John now has to think about all of the things he's having difficulty writing on. That part I got, but isn't it specific when you use the example difficulty writing his name? Yes. That yeah. works. Okay, that so works. then, difficulty and difficulty writing, letters writing the elf letters of the elf. Right. Okay. Writing is not specific enough. Yeah. Okay. I I had I got it. Got it. I Good. I understood that. I thought the last part you said something else. Okay. Got it. All of that uh, makes perfect and, sense. And then the fourth guy, and I'll I'll be I'll be I'll be a stickler about these, so you'll get used to them. And then guideline number four is that we do want it to be as specific as possible. And making an unsolved problem specific means using one or both of two strategies. Strategy number one, asking W questions, who, what, where, when. So in the example I just did with the writing, I asked what. What is John having difficulty writing on to make that one more specific, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And then strategy number two is asking, what expectation is John having difficulty meeting? So if you said to me, John always um, comes in crying from recess. I'm going to say... Um, what expectation is John having difficult crying is the behavior. We're not including that. What expectation is John having difficulty meeting during recess? Oh, he's having difficulty agreeing with Billy on the rules of the four square game during recess. Got it. That's the unsolved problem. Difficulty agreeing with Billy on the rules of the four square game during recess. Good. Mm -hmm. Let's begin. Here are the prompts. I'm gonna ask you the first one first. Are there specific tasks or expectations that John is having difficulty completing or getting started on? And here we go. Well, I would say that John is having difficulty joining the class at morning meeting time on the, in the circle area. Joining the class in the circle at morning meeting. Great unsolved problem. I can't think of any way to make it more specific. It's great. Any other tasks or expectations John is having difficulty completing or getting started on? Well, I don't know if this is considered a task, but um, difficulty regulating his voice volume. Is that well, here's what I'm going to ask you, because at the moment, that's what we call clumped. I'm going to try splitting it, right? Okay. Regulating would not be a verb that I would throw at a kindergartner. Okay. And so I'm going to ask you, first of all, I'm going to ask you when. When is John having difficulty? I'm not writing anything down yet. When is John having difficulty regulating his voice volume? If you, if you say... I all the time i'm going to ask you i'm going to ask yeah, you yeah i know i can't say all the time no, I, when frustrated but sometimes it's even when he's not frustrated okay so we're going to take frustrated or not frustrated out okay and let's think more specifically either about what he's getting frustrated about or um when he's having difficulty speaking softly which is what I would, well, let me ask you, what is your expectation? When you say regulating voice volume, tell me how you would put that for a kindergartner. An inside voice, using an inside voice. Difficulty using inside voice, and now all we need is during. 
and it could be multiple durings. During a specific time. Conversation. During, during direction, during a time when directions are being given. No, but he, that he would be listening then. No, no, because then he squat. If you, if somebody's trying to say something, he right. screams. So would that be during conversations? No, Too I don't quiet. know. It's not I'm a conversation. Sure. It's a, it's not a conversation. It's a, the task you're trying to do. Difficulty. Uh, um, he raises his voice when he doesn't understand the, well, isn't it Lee when difficulty using an inside voice when, um, it, it's when an academic task is presented. So difficulty, right. using voice but I was trying to be specific when, when directions are given in literacy or directions are given. Okay, yeah, okay. I was right, because academic's too big. I was trying to academic's think. Academic's too big. And by the way, we're gonna get a lot of, I get the feeling we're gonna get a lot here, right? No. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot to get. The difficulty using inside voice when instructions are given during or four, now let's make our list. Okay, well, four class activities? Like that, well, what could class activity be? Uh, for physical education. For, okay. uh, I mean, for art can... projects. Okay. For hanging up backpack and coat. Right. Yeah, math. Math? Mm -hmm. Yes. So now we just have to think about what we want our STEM to be. I understand that he's having difficulty using an inside voice, but is the fact that he's having difficulty using an inside voice just his way of letting us know that he's having difficulty with each, with each of these things? Is, is John having difficulty following the instructions for phys ed? Yes, I think that's what it's related to. Is John it, having difficulty following the directions for art projects? Yes. Is John having difficulty hanging up his pack and coat? Yes. Yeah, pack and coat. Is John having difficulty in math? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to take out inside voice. I, I get it. Yeah. But I think that by the time he starts screaming, the expectation he's having difficulty meeting that comes before that has already happened, right? Then he has difficulty using an inside voice, but before that he's having difficulty doing something. Would you agree with that? Yes, yes, and I would yes. even say math, I would say it's written math, like pen, pencil, paper. I think we can separate the math even from being even more specific. Absolutely. Mo, what do you think? Would you agree sometimes he just isn't even aware even like hit of of his voice at all he's screech he's he's got a really hot screeching and yelling even when he's doing something that's not frustrating or preferred maybe not you, can, well maybe if you have an example is there a time when he's having difficulty using an inside voice where the difficulty using the inside voice is not signaling to us that he's having difficulty meeting an expectation. I guess I don't. I don't think you usually, I think that I hear what you're saying, Mo. I think usually it's it's in result of a, um, an expectation he can't meet. Right. Yeah, and he's, he's also, already just regulated and it's- I hear what you're saying too, because he'll, if you, ask him a question and even if he just doesn't want to answer you he or grunts in a loud like oh like no but that's not related to it, it's even that is, even that is late. here's what i want to know are there any times when 
There's not something he's frustrated about or having difficulty doing. That is a time when you expect inside voices to be used. That he's still having difficulty using an inside voice. Anything unprompted by an expectation he's having difficulty meeting. I don't Probably think there not. is. Yeah. I don't think so. I think he's that's no. usually frustra frustration. I think the frustration and irritability is just most of the time. So right. then yeah. so we so don't think, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got yeah. it. So so our list of things that John is having tasks and activities that John is having difficulty participating in and completing is going to be quite long. Do we want to be more specific about phys ed? Anything in particular in phys ed or just following the directions? Following, a, I would say like following along as the directions vary. Multiple steps, yeah. Multiple oral, steps yeah. are just too much for him. And are there different activities in phys ed? Yes. I mean, every week it's a, di or every day that they go, it's a different activity. And, mm -hmm. and so we try to pre-teach, but that, you know, he still has a difficult time with following the steps. Here's what I'm wondering. Because the wording of the unsolved problem on the ALSIP is the prompt that gets John talking. If we say to him, I notice that you're having difficulty following directions in phys ed, what's up? Is he going to know what we're talking about? No. Or is that not specific enough? No. Yeah. So how do we want to make that one more specific? The only way I can think of to make it more specific is by the activity of phys ed, what the directions are being given about. Kickball. I was just going to say it was um, what I'm thinking of most specifically. I guess we could call it the hula hoop game. Hula hoop game. Any other phys ed activities that come to mind that he's having difficulty following the directions? We don't have a huge repertoire because it's difficult to get him to start phys ed. To, to go to phys ed? Exactly. Right. I'm, I'm gonna add that as another unsolved problem because going is different than the activity. Right but you are quite certain that he's having difficulty following the directions of the hula hoop game in phys ed. Yes. Good. If, we, if there's any other activities that you know he has difficulties with in phys ed in terms of following the directions and you think of them, let me know, but I'm just gonna stick with the hula hoop game now for now, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any, I'm gonna do the same thing with art projects. Does that vary or? Art varies. He's having difficulty transitioning out of art. So that's a, that Is could that be another it? one. Um, he has the, difficulty leaving art. Yes. To go to back to the classroom. That's a good one. Yep. It's not necessarily related to things he's having difficulty doing in art. Are there specific things we know that he's having difficulty doing in art? There's a common theme of difficulty I'm trying to think of the, the specific situation that he was having Difficulty sitting on his own mat in art. Sweet. Good. Hanging up backpack and coat, I think is fine. Mm -hmm. Math, to global. I know that there's written math. What else is there? 
what the written math I think is is specifically writing his numbers. Zero. Well, yeah. No, should we go zero through nine? No, zero through 20. He's only, I mean, really and truly, we've worked zero to five. Well, the reason I said zero to 20 is because that's the kindergarten end of year oh, expectation. expectation. But then I'm like, well. Oh, what's your expectation right. for him? Right. So. Zero right now five. it's zero to five. Mm -hmm. Good. These are great. But there's so much more. <laughs> any I, other I'm, I struck because I'm like a big picture down smaller I tend to think big then go small so I'm I guess I'm as we go on I keep thinking I'm going to figure out the big picture and I'm not sure I figured out the big picture yet of what well it's it's nice to try to figure out the big picture no of like what okay but not of Jack, of what, of what I'm supposed to be doing. But, well, <laughs> the big picture is always seductive. <laughs> Great. As it relates to talking to John about the difficulties he's having at school, specific is gold. Mm. So, Mo, that doesn't mean you shouldn't continue thinking about global. It just means you're not talking to John about global. No, but. You know what I'm saying? If you yes. were hoping that being specific would help us figure out globally what's going on with John, um, all I'm hearing is that John is lacking a lot of skills and that there are many expectations John is having difficulty meeting. I, so you know, I, I guess what I mean by big picture, so are we going to just pick, uh, like, we'll just pick a couple. We're going to prioritize. Right, that's what I mean. Working with John on going. More than, correct. We're, we're, we're going to get the comprehensive list, but we will never be working on more than three unsolved problems at a time with John. Okay, okay. okay. that's what I mean by I kind of, okay, correct. all right. Now, if we were trying to work on every unsolved problem at once, it would pretty much guarantee that none would get solved. Exactly. Right? Okay. Furthermore, there would be no way to word it, right? The best way we could word it is, we've noticed you're having difficulty in doing pretty much about just about anything at school. What, yeah. What's up, right? <laughs> okay. Get me out of here. <laughs> Forget <laughs> it, throw in the towel. Get nothing. So if that's what you mean by big picture. Yes, that's what I mean, what, yes. Okay, I, I wanted kind of know where we're going, how, cause I, I'm like, my head's like, how are we gonna, going to do this? We'll be here all night if we try to well, go through. Probably, we're not, we're gonna well, stop uh, 26 minutes to let you guys go home. <laughs> no, no, no. I meant, meaning yes. we could just go on and not, like we could write. We could, yeah. we're gonna get as many as we can up until okay. 5 p.m., right? <laughs> the good news is we're not working on them all at once with John. Right. But, but I think that, first of all, it's good for you to know where we're heading here. Where yeah. we're heading here is we're going to get a comprehensive list and then work on a few of them. Right? Okay, perfect. I find that it's good to get a comprehensive list because number one, it may never have been done before. And it's very good to have the full complement of expectations John is having difficulty meeting across the course of the school day. I find that to be very useful for a few reasons. Number one, once again, it's never been done before. Number two, it's specific. Number three, it makes us prioritize too much. And number four, it should make us ask ourselves, golly, look at all the expectations this poor kid is having difficulty meeting across the course of the school day. Got it. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah, that's what does that that's say it. about our expectations for John? Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. And yeah. what does that say about, about what we should do with all of our expectations with John? Mm -hmm. Exactly. All okay. of that's beautiful. Because if you all are naming expectations that you are pretty certain he doesn't have a snowball's chance of meeting, 
then now the ones that you think he has at least a chance of meeting that you think are sort of in range, those are fair game for us to try to solve. But the right. ones that you think that just is not happening anytime soon. I'm always asking the question, why would we have an expectation for a kid, not just a kindergarten, but a 12th grader that we know the kid can't meet? Why would we have that expectation, right? Because of standards, because of what kids at that grade are supposed to do, right? That's not differentiated instruction. That's not personalized learning. That's not universal design. It's not even good teaching. Mm -hmm. So that should be happening as we're talking about these things too. But let's keep going. Yes. Here's okay. what we have so far. Here are some, here are the expectations we have so far that John is having difficulty meeting. He's having difficulty joining the class in the circle at morning meeting. He's having difficulty um, following the directions in the hula hoop game at, at phys ed. He's having difficulty going to phys ed. He's having difficulty sitting on his own mat in art. He's having difficulty leaving art to go back to the classroom. And he's having difficulty writing his numbers zero to five. Sounds like a pretty frustrating day already for John. Sounds like a pretty frustrating day for a kid who's lacking all of those skills we checked off, but let's keep going. Are there any other uh, tasks, expectations, John is having difficulty meeting, uh, getting started on or completing? I can't think of any others. I thought there were going to be dozens. <laughs> there, are, there are though, like uh, but a task or an expectation. Okay. Um, Anything John, you want him to do that he's having difficulty doing, basically. Lee, John what about has. Okay. Oh, let me let me do this one, then we'll do the bus. Yeah. John has difficulty accepting. See that John yeah, has difficulty. Um, I need help with how to say it. He tries to go into the gym all the time, no matter if there's a music class going on in there, which there often is. He has difficulty. Um, staying out of the gym. Staying out of the gym. <laughs> there you go. See, that's why you're who you are. <laughs> staying out of the gym. <laughs> who I am is the reason I've done this 10,000 times. That's all. Well, um, that's it in a nutshell. He has difficulty staying out of the gym. Out of gym during? When it's being used. Got it. By other classes, yeah. And I think the thing is that I, when I say that there's not a lot of others with difficulty completing because Lee and Mo are also masterful at not presenting too much um, tasks. So I think with the morning meeting task is the one that we're trying to present, but a lot right. of other, so there are many more tasks that he's not doing, but they're not I, being presented because we know better. Because. <laughs> right, better. and that's exactly. what I, think I was trying to get at with earlier, like where are we going with this? Because we, that's because we, I don't, we wouldn't expect, I'm not even sure he's ready for that morning meeting part. Yeah. Right. But we got to, like, I see that nice, like saying, we got to start with something to, right. Right. That's right. That's right. But I'm like, that's why I think I mentioned even backpack and coat because like at kindergarten, like I narrow it down in the beginning, it's a huge, it takes six solid weeks for them to even be able to do that. And some still can't right. without difficulty. So this, is, this is just the expectations that you are currently placing on him. It sounds to me like if you were placing all of the expectations that you would place on most kindergartners on him, we would have an extraordinarily long list, but you guys have prioritized some things away already. Right. Which is a very good sign, by the way. But we're only looking at the expectations that you are currently placing on him that he's having difficulty meeting. Okay. So now that you think about that, any tasks or activities among those that you are currently placing on him that you haven't mentioned so far that he's having difficulty reliably meeting? 
Well, he did also did he like today have difficulty um, difficulty going outside to, for recess when it's recess time. Which is that the same as phys ed? No, it's no. different. And I know Lee, it wasn't technically recess, but we were saying it was recess. Right. You know, so we were saying time to go outside and play, and he was having difficulty going outside during that time. Got it. Right. Good unsolved problem. Any other tasks or activities that you're placing on him? Well, he has difficulty getting on the bus. Yeah, yeah I think we should address the bus next. Mm -hmm. In the morning or in the afternoon or both? Well, it's, it's happened both. Going home, yeah. Like going home, usually. But we know he has difficulty getting from home on the bus, too. Like, at home, he has difficulty getting on the bus. From home to school, both ways. Good. Great. We're on a roll. Mm -hmm. Other tasks or activities that he's having difficulty completing or participating participating in. That you're placing on him. You know how basic this is, but uh, John is having difficulty using his water bottle properly. That's how basic it is. Can you fill in, flesh that out for me a little bit more? Flesh it out for you. He comes in with a water bottle. He takes a couple sips out of it. When he begins to get frustrated, he starts using it to throw water all over the place. I've got it. Using water bottle. How about I say only for drinking? Perfect. That's, yes. I, I, I don't think that's, I think that's huge, Lee, when you said it's it simple. Is, yeah. I think that is like a perfect I mean, starting. Like, well, yeah, it's yeah. true following what you said, which is true. We are at this basic, basic place with this little guy. And yeah. that is a huge issue, especially because I'm with him all morning. And some days I think I should wear a raincoat. <laughs> Keeping his food in his mouth. I was going to say, I think John's, really John's, saying, John's having so. difficulty completing snack time. He's having exactly. difficulty completing his snack, eating his snack during snack eating time. Eating his snack. Well, not even during snack, it's just eating a snack, period. Well, yeah, during the time that he should, that's the expectation though, is that he would have a snack. Right, 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 right. So it does sound like you are at a very basic level with this kid. And what we're doing now is, and first of all, it's fantastic that you all are sensitive to the fact that you have a kid here who um, is at a level of development, apparently, that, um, uh, is well below what you would expect in a five-year-old in your kindergarten class. Mm -hmm. It is very admirable that you are trying to meet him where he's at. And what we're describing now is given where he's at, here are the expectations. He's still having difficulty meeting right. despite um, your best efforts to meet him where he's at. Right. Good. Mm -hmm. Any other activities, tasks, he's having difficulty completing or participating in that come to mind. Um, using, John is having difficulty um, using crayons and glue sticks and in a in a productive way. So we don't know what productive way means. So we'll have to make it kid friendly. Okay. So using crayons on paper only, or I there mean, that's perfect. Yeah, that is crayons and glue sticks and. Mm. You have to break them up into two or yeah. three. The scissors. Right. So, scissors, right? Uh, crayon, scissors. Yeah, he gets to use scissors. Well, <laughs> on occasion. Okay. What about even a pencil? Yeah, and a pencil. When he was frustrated the other day, he ended up, you know, drawing he on the floor. Right. Well, we don't. We don't want to go with what he does when he's frustrated. That's no. I mean, I'm right. saying. He's just saying. He had a I'm saying, should we put pencil in? Oh. Using pencil on paper. Got it. Great. 
any other tasks, activities he's having difficulty completing, getting started on, or participating in. I had one in my head. I was wondering if we should do, and I lost it. Um, I'm going to move us on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. The next prompt is, are there uh, classmates, the students having difficulty getting along with in specific conditions? Not really. No. Yeah, that's where I was starting to think about that, like traveling in a line or this, but we're not there. So right. you're not expecting that. No. Right. We're not expecting that. But and we see lots of we see, we see some strengths. In there that. are strengths in that area, right? Exactly. I don't know how. That's exactly with right. peers. There's strengths. So with peers, there are strengths, and other things related to peers that he's having difficulty with. You're even. You're not even expecting right now. Right. Fair. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next prompt: Are there tasks? and activities this student is having difficulty moving from or to. Now we got a few of them, Art yeah. back to the classroom. Right. Any others? Well, on the bus. That's to the bus. We got. got that. Um, well, yeah, really, um, I'm trying to think of how to say it. Uh, difficulty having, having a, he's having difficulty going from the classroom to the, um, it's, I'm trying to, uh, the resource room. Is that what he knows it to be called? He probably knows a little, we would call it the teacher's name room. Got it. So we yeah. won't, yeah. this is so-and-so's name. Yeah. Good, it's a great one. Any other? tasks or activities he's having difficulty moving from or to that we haven't mentioned so far. Would you say Lee at times we had difficulty moving from recess to inside? Like we have phys ed to inside. Is recess to inside true too? Well, normally re recess, I, I, I don't expect Expect him when we're outside, that expectation isn't there if it's just the two of us. It's usually because he wants a snack or he needs to go to the bathroom. And when he's with his friends, classmates at recess, it's then time to get on the bus. So it goes back to the bus. Yep. Right. So it goes back to the bus, difficulty getting on the bus because they go from recess to okay. the bus. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna move on to the final prompt, believe it or not. Are there classes, and this is, we may have covered a lot of this. Are there classes, activities, the student is having difficulty attending or being on time to? Don't know how much that would apply to a kindergartner, but. Or to this kindergartner. Right. Right. Because I just am going to say yes. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> Yeah. Of the things that you're expecting him to go to, what's he having difficulty going to? We've well, got a few of them already. Right. But the timely part, the expectation of time. Do you have the expectation of time? No. no. So I'm going to cross that off for now. Right. Because it's not an expectation you have right now. Right. Except for the backpack and like that, that base. Being, right. We covered it with the backpack of difficulty. That's the expectation is to check into the classroom and hang up your backpack and kind of say hello. Got it. So now let me ask one more and then we'll be done. Are there any other expectations that we haven't covered that you can think of that you are actually expecting him to meet that he's having difficulty meeting? I'm thinking, I don't keep it. I, I just, we don't well, have a lot of expectations right now. How yeah. about his comportment with other kids as it relates to, I'm just throwing stuff out there that I frequently hear, body space, keeping hands to self. Yes, he has difficulty keeping hands to self. 
but not with peers. With adults. With adults. Now, I, my bet is that that's almost exclusively when he's frustrated about something. Yes. He also and has I, difficulty, um, help me, difficulty keeping his body um, in the space he's supposed to be in. Like, you know, he, right. even when, and even without frustration. So climbing on radiators, climbing on tables, putting your feet up. So difficulty um, keeping his body in the chair or keeping his feet on the right. floor. Right. And that's, that, that doesn't have anything to do with, that's not connected to frustration. Right. So I was just thinking about how we want to word that, that he will understand. Um, we don't want to say not climbing on things because we try not to use not. Right, right. It's, um, it's, it's a safety thing. It's like keeping his body safe. He won't know what that means either. I'm just trying to figure out how to word that he's supposed to keep his feet on the ground. Well, yeah. then you well, can body we break it up. Difficulty walking from one space to another. What or that's, what's it's that? Difficulty, it's difficulty sitting on the chair when you're in the counselor's room. I mean, that's a, you know, he's yeah. a diff difficulty, difficulty sitting on your bottom or on your bottom, but whatever, how at bottom when you're you're with miss lee miss you know when mrs robinson i'm just yeah. thinking those are the times oh, like, like when if, if it was circle time or it's not circle time anymore it's different but it's still they sit on the floor for instruction sometimes so difficulty mm, i don't know if that's an expectation for him yet i think there's an expectation that when mrs robinson's alone with him that there's an expectation that he's sitting on his bottom on a chair. Yeah, or sitting on his bottom on the floor. Yeah, I think that's an expectation. I mean, it sounds like we're, because Wait. the alternative is climbing. Right, 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 right. It's not I, like we're being totally harsh, like you need to sit, it's. No, 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 right. I, right. But then what about times it's appropriate to lay on your belly? Like sometimes I'm like, you can lay on your belly to paint right. or today, yeah. I think Although, I mean, her color. Is, he, yeah. is he painting in Mrs. Robinson's room? Sometimes. It, this sounds like it's several. Okay. Well, I've got sitting on chair on floor or floor in counselor's room. That's good. That's good. I think that's good. I do too. And he'd understand that. He would understand that very much so. Um, what about difficulty walking from classroom to the counselor's room? Counselors, that's what I was going to say, but is that what we want to call it? Sure. Well, we don't <laughs> want to. Trying to I'm figuring, trying to figure out a way to, and, and I do that, we do this for other students too. Like, oh, it, it, they just tend to slide and so lot slide, you know, slide on their back or slide on. So I, I always say stand up when you're moving so that, you know, you don't get trip, trip over someone. Someone doesn't trip on you. Someone doesn't step because it's just natural for them to crawl across the floor because that's what five-year-olds do. So one of the expectation is we stand up and walk unless it's scooching over to a spot. So mm -hmm. how do we word that? Is that even an expectation yet for him? To, is that something we... Oh, I think it is for sure. Because yeah. he does get on his back and slide. You're right. You're right. That's... So we expect him to stand up and walk. Yes, stand up and walk. And I think that is the beginning, one of the beginning places to start with him. Like, how do we... And it's not about because he's running through the halls or it's understanding how to move your body from one point to another. Well, but in terms of exactly what your expectation is, is that he stand up and walk. That he stand up and walk. From the classroom to... What do you call the room that you... Just Mrs. Robinson's room? I'm just trying to think of what we say to No, um, we don't really even call it anything. Yeah, probably should name that room. Well, yeah. if it's Mrs. Robinson who's in it, then it's Mrs. Robinson's room. Yeah. Mm. I think does, that's he know you, does he know you to be Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Yes. 
any other expectations that we haven't thought of that he's having difficulty meeting. You guys have done amazing. What's interesting here is we've probably got about 25. We would have 50 to 60 if you weren't already being very judicious about the expectations you're placing on him, which is fantastic because why place expectations on him that you already know he can't meet? But just to be exhaustive, anything else, other, any other expectations that we haven't met, mentioned that you have for him across the course of the day, as you think about him across the course of the day, that he's having difficulty meeting? I don't think so. I don't I think yeah. yeah. Well done. Our ALSIP meeting is now over. <laughs> and not a moment too soon.